Wolfpack. My name is Nora Prohaska, and I'm the campus organizer for Bernie Sanders here in Northern Nevada. <laughs> Over the past few weeks, I've had the opportunity to speak with many of you here today about what's at stake in this election. We talked about the rising cost of college and student debt. We talked about the concentration camps at the border. And many of you talked about the growing threat of climate change. I feel, like many of you, I feel like I spent the last half of my life watching the planet die while people get rich off of killing it. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of watching so many Americans pretend like nothing is happening while the least privileged in this country are already suffering from the disastrous effects of a warming and polluted environment. No one deserves to live on a dead planet, and no one deserves to profit off of killing it. Our future isn't for sale, and that's why I'm supporting Bernie Sanders, because he has the only plan to really address climate change. It's called the Green New Deal. The Green New Deal is the only plan that can get our um, transportation industry and energy grid off of fossil fuels in just 10 years, and fully decarbonize our economy by 2050 at the latest. But Bernie Sanders isn't going to stop there. He's going to hold the fossil fuel industry accountable for the damage they've already done. He's going to make them help pay for fixing the environment that they've destroyed. That's why we need Bernie Sanders as our president. Remember, this isn't just a political campaign. This is a political revolution. We're up against some of the most powerful people in the history of the world. But even with all of their money, all of their millions and billions of dollars, we have something they don't. They don't have us. We're going to win this election not by standing by and hoping for a miracle and hoping for someone else to solve our problems. We're going to win this election ourselves, one conversation at a time. We're going to talk to everybody. We're going to spread the word that real change is possible in 2020. So if you're ready to take the next step in this revolution, our revolution, I want you to join me tomorrow at 1 p.m. at the Joe Crowley Student Union right behind you um, to learn more about what this campaign is going to look like here on the ground. Um, please uh, talk to my fellow organizers immediately after this rally. All around you are wearing the volunteer badges um, to find out how you can get involved and taking this country back from the millionaires and billionaires who think they have our democracy bought and paid for. We're going to prove them wrong. We're going to win this campaign, and we're going to save this planet. Thank you all so much for coming. Welcome to the stage, Evelyn Galvin. Voices like myself and many others 
so that we don't have to be afraid anymore. Um, I choose Bernie because I believe in the right of a free education and free health care for everybody, regardless of I choose Bernie because I don't want to be afraid walking with my family out of fear that one of them will be arrested and I'll never see them again in this country. And I, I choose Bernie because I want the end of white supremacy and racism and to have acceptance in this country for everybody. Um, and I think that's vital for students and teachers and citizens to take a stand with this campaign and with this candidate and with this movement to uplift those voices that have been silenced for so long so we can regain that power back and so we don't have to be afraid anymore. Thank you. Please welcome to the stage, Autumn Harry. Hello everyone. I'd like to first begin by acknowledging the original peoples of this land and welcome <laughs> and welcome Senator Sanders to Numa and Washu Territory. My name is Autumn Harry. I'm a member of the Pamela Lake Paiute tribe here in Northern Nevada. I am both Paiute and Navajo. And this fall, I began my second year of graduate school pursuing my master's degree in geography. When I reflect on my academic journey, I think about the many times I've walked into a classroom and have been the only Native student there. Our indigenous knowledge systems predate the existence of this country, yet Natives represent less than 1% of college attending students within the United States. It's important to understand historically, Native Americans seeking higher education have experienced exclusion and forced assimilation. It has not been long since the boarding school era when the U.S. government forced tens of thousands of Native children to attend boarding schools where they were punished for speaking their languages and prohibited from practicing their traditional and cultural ways of life. Today, our people are still healing from that institutional trauma. And we continue to face barriers accessing higher education due to lack of funding resources, lack of indigenous faculty, and lack of technology to rural reservation communities. And the list goes on. Despite these hardships, we are still here. And I am proud to announce that beginning this semester, Paiute language is now offered as a course here at UNR. Our new language will be spoken on this campus since the university's establishment in 1874. So that language is returning, and we're the ones who are bringing it back. This is a monumental step in the right direction, and I am confident educational opportunities are only going to increase with Senator Sanders' plan to provide free tuition, making higher education accessible and affordable to all. And because the issue of climate change is so close to my heart, I cannot leave this stage without acknowledging Senator Sanders' consistent support of indigenous-led land protection efforts. From supporting the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe in their fight against the Dakota Access Pipeline, to publicly opposing the storage of nuclear waste here in Nevada, in Yucca Mountain, <laughs> Senator Sanders continues to listen to our voices and refine his understanding of Indigenous issues, especially as we demand corporations be held accountable for the destruction and desecration of sacred lands. And as a young person, I am extremely grateful. And I look forward to the day when we finally elect a president who values people over profit. And with 
when we reach out with compassion and love to those around us. That's good for us and it is good for the society. And that society of compassion, love, and concern, a society based on justice, is the society we hope to create. But the second part of what us not me means is something you won't hear much about on television or in the corporate media. And what that means is that no president, not Bernie Sanders or anybody else, can do it alone. Because the people who control, to a significant degree, the economic life and the political life of this country, the corrupt corporate elite have enormous wealth and enormous power. And the main point here is that the only way that real change ever takes place, has ever taken place in American history, from the labor movement, to the civil rights movement, to the women's movement, to the gay movement, to the environmental movement, the only way that real change ever takes place is when millions of people stand together and demand justice. And that is what this campaign is about. So this campaign is obviously about winning the election and defeating Trump, but it is also about transforming America and creating an economy, an energy system, and a government that works for all of us, not just the 1%. Nelson Mandela, one of the great leaders of recent time, said something, and I'm paraphrasing a little bit. He said, everything is impossible until it is done. Everything is impossible until it is done. You all know what that means? It means that if you have a dream, people around you say, oh my God, that is ridiculous, you can't do it. And after you accomplish it, people say, hey, that's obvious, of course. We all know that that was what should have been done. So our job in this campaign is to think big, not small. It is to think of the kind of nation we wish to become and to be prepared to take on all of those who, because of their greed and corruption, stand in our way. Our job is to do exactly the opposite of what Donald Trump is trying to do. What Trump is trying to do in an unprecedented way is to divide our people up based on the color of their skin, based on where they were born, based on their religion, based on their sexual orientation. That is what Trump is trying to do. And our job is exactly the opposite. Our job is to bring all of our people together around an agenda that works for all of us, not just the 1%. Let me say a few words about what that agenda means. That agenda will speak something you don't see in the media at all about the massive level of income and wealth inequality that exists in America. Why don't we see that on TV very much? Anyone know? You're not going to see it because the people who own the media are the 1%. But here are the facts. And I want you all to listen carefully. Today in our great country, our democracy, Three people own more wealth than the bottom half of American society. The top 1% owns more wealth than the bottom 92%. And here, here in Nevada or in Vermont, 
Many other states in the country, you got people working two or three jobs to put food on the table, and yet 49% of all new income goes to the top 1%. So what we have got to say as loudly and clearly as we can to the 1%, to Wall Street, to the pharmaceutical industry, to the insurance companies, to the fossil fuel industry, sorry guys, you will no longer have it all. We're going to create an economy that works for everybody, not just the people on top. What does that mean in concrete terms? It means that nobody in America who works 40 hours a week in the wealthiest country in the history of the world should live in poverty. We're going to raise the minimum wage to at least 15 bucks an hour. Our vision of America is equal pay for equal work. Women will not continue to make 80 cents on the dollar. Our vision for America is that we understand when we grow the trade union movement, we grow the middle class, we're going to make it easier for workers to join unions. And I want to tell you the progress that we've made. Four years ago, when I came right here, right to this campus, and I talked about raising that minimum wage to 15 bucks an hour, people told me I was too radical, I was too extreme. But I want to tell you tonight that over the last several years, seven states in America and the United States House of Representatives have passed legislation to raise that minimum wage to 15 bucks an hour. So an idea that seemed radical four years ago, not so radical today. And I'll give you another example of how we make change. Four years ago, I came right here to this campus, and I said that in this particular moment in American history, when we have exploding technology, when we are living in a competitive global economy, we have to rethink free public education. It is no longer good enough for free, free public education to be K through 12. We've got to make public colleges and universities tuition free. <laughs> Four years ago, that was a radical idea. Take a look at what's happening in California, in New York, in Tennessee, in Detroit in communities all over the country, they are moving in exactly that direction. And as president, public colleges and universities, we will make free in every state in the union. And here's another issue that we raised and is gaining steam all across America. Four years ago, I raised the issue that how does it happen that when young people your age do the right thing, you do what you were told and you go out and you get a higher education, why is it that millions of young people today are leaving school deeply in debt? And we're talking about 45 million Americans owning over one point, owing over $1.5 trillion in debt. And some of these folks have been paying that debt off for decades. So what this campaign is about is understanding that if we could bail out the crooks on Wall Street who nearly destroyed this economy 11 years ago, if Trump and his friends could give well over a trillion dollars in tax breaks to the top 1%, and large profitable corporations, we can cancel all student debt in this country. And we do that 
by imposing a modest tax on Wall Street speculation. So our vision, you know, which today some will consider radical and crazy, in 10 years they'll say, well, of course, that's the right thing. Our vision for education is that every person in this country who has the ability and the desire to get a higher education, and that may mean college, it may be a trade school, but every person in this country who wants a higher education should be able to do so regardless of the income of their family. And when we talk about education, the most important thing that we can understand is that as human beings, education is inherent in what we must be doing in our life to the day that we die. That's what human beings should be doing. And that means, and I want you to think about this, about the dysfunctionality of what goes on in America today. Every psychologist understands that the most important years of human development are zero to four, okay? That's when young people develop intellectually and emotionally. And yet if you look at the child care system, the pre-K system, all over this country, it is a disaster. It is unaffordable for working families. And the quality often is not what our children deserve. That is why together we are going to create universal affordable pre-K. And why we are going to respect our educators, put substantial sums of money into public education, make sure that no teacher in America earns less than $60,000. I get very tired of hearing these politicians who tell me how much they love America, but they don't love the children of America. If you love America, you love the children, you love the educators, and you make sure that our kids have the best education in the world. And when we talk about a progressive agenda, we must do what every other major country on earth does, and that is guarantee health care to all people as a human right. This is not a radical idea. This exists all over the industrialized world. I live in Burlington, Vermont. 50 miles north of me is a country called Canada. When you have major surgery in Canada and you spend a month in the hospital, do you know what the bill is when you come out? Zero! Zero. And that is what a humane democratic society is about. Health care is a right, not a privilege. The function of a rational health care system is one in which we guarantee quality care to all people as a human right, not a system simply designed to make billions in profit for the health care industry. Today in America, and I want you to hear this, and I want you to understand the dysfunctionality of the current system. Number one, we spend twice as much per capita on health care as do the people of any other major country. So it's like you bought a car for 50000 I bought a car for 25000 and my car runs better than your car. Something is very broken. And what is broken is that the function of the current system is to make the insurance companies and the drug companies rich not to provide quality care to all of our people. Every poll 
world that I have seen in recent months tells me that the American people now support a Medicare for All single payer program. And I want you to know, I want you to know what that program is about, because it's not complicated and it exists in Canada and other countries. And that means that when you walk into any doctor's office you want, freedom of choice, you go to any hospital you want, you don't have to take out your credit card, you don't have to take out your wallet, no premiums, no co-payments, no deductibles, no out-of-pocket expenses. Healthcare will be paid, healthcare will be paid out of the general tax base in a progressive way, which means that if you're not paying premiums, deductibles, and out-of-pocket expenses, you will be paying less for health care than you are today with a much better comprehensive program than exists now. And by the way, on the Medicare for All, nobody in America will pay more than $200 a year for prescription drugs. Because we are going to take on we're going to take on not only the greed, but the corruption and the price fixing of the pharmaceutical industry. Yeah. Let me touch on another issue that obviously impacts Nevada, impacts America. And Nevada can and must play a major role in this process. Right now, we have a President of the United States who believes that climate change is a hoax. I believe that Donald Trump is a hoax. And let me make a promise to you, which is a pretty low-bar promise, and that is if elected president, I will believe in science. But I want to say this, what the scientists are telling us, and all of you know this, is that not only is climate change real, climate change is already doing devastating harm to our country and countries all over the world. I think all of you have seen the incredible damage done in the Bahamas. You remember what happened in Puerto Rico uh, just a couple of years ago, devastated that island. You are familiar with what happened a number of years ago in New Orleans with regard to Katrina, what happened in New Jersey and New York with Hurricane Sandy. Uh, and this is just an hour part of the world. They got heat waves in Europe, in Australia, drought, terrible drought in the United States and Latin America. People are no longer able to grow the crops they need to feed their families, to find the drinking water that they need to stay alive. Climate change, according to the scientists, is the existential threat to our entire planet. Now, I'm not here to scare you. I really am not. But what the scientists are telling us is that we do not get our act together. And very, very shortly, there will be irreparable damage done to this planet within the next 11 years, and it only gets worse after that. And what we have got to say, think about is 20, 30, 40 years ago, when you were looking your kids in the eye and your grandchildren in the eyes, and they say to you, Grandma, Grandpa, didn't you know what the scientists were telling us? Why didn't you do something when you had the chance? I don't want anybody here to be in that position. And that is why I have recently introduced the most comprehensive climate change plan ever introduced by any candidate for anything. Now, I have... I have been criticized for the size of the plan, which is over $16 trillion, which is a lot of money. 
but in fact, it pays for itself in a variety of ways. But more importantly, what you have got to be thinking about is if, if we do not act aggressively in America and around the world to combat climate change, what is the alternative? How much is too much to save the planet? And I think, I think that the time is now to pass a Green New Deal, which is, is essentially what our program is. It will create up to 20 million jobs as we transform our energy system away from fossil fuel to energy efficiency and sustainable energy. In a state like Nevada, where you are blessed, sometimes overly blessed, with sunshine. I was here a few weeks ago, 113 degrees. You get enough sun. Here in Nevada, you should be using that sun. And we look forward to Nevada. We look forward to Florida. We look forward to those states blessed with sunshine to help lead our country in transforming our energy system away from fossil fuel to sustainable energies like solar and wind. Our campaign is a justice campaign, and that means we are going to bring about sweeping reforms to a broken and racist criminal justice system. A criminal justice system which imprisons more people in America than any other country on earth disproportionately Native American. means we invest in our young people in jobs and education, not build more jails and have more incarceration. That we end the so-called war on drugs. Four years ago, when I talked about legalizing marijuana, seemed like a radical idea. Ain't such a radical idea now in Nevada and in many other states around the country. And obviously, when we talk about a justice campaign, we talk about the end of demonizing immigrants in this country. I am sick and tired of Trump's racist attacks on immigrants in America, and on day one, we end that racism. Our immigration policy, number one, on day one, through executive order, we restore the legal status of 1.8 million young people in the DACA program. As soon as we can, and we will work aggressively on this, we will introduce comprehensive immigration reform and a path toward citizenship for the 11 million undocumented in this country. And number three, we will establish a humane border policy which does not rip babies from the arms of their mothers and put children in cages. That's not what we do in America. So what this campaign is about is about beating Trump, but it is about transforming America. It is taking on the corruption and greed of Wall Street, the corruption and greed of the drug companies, of the insurance companies, of the fossil fuel industry, of the prison industrial complex, because we're going to end private prisons and detention centers. 
and military industrial complex. Yeah. We need we need a strong military in America, but we do not need to spend more than the next 10 nations combined. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, there is a lot of work in front of us, and I know that many of your friends have kind of given up on the political process. And when you tell them you were here to a Bernie Sanders rally, they're going to say, why would you waste your time doing that? But I want you to respond to them and tell them that you are sick and tired of hearing them moaning and groaning about college debt, about health care, about the $10 an hour they're making on their jobs, that they can't afford housing, or whatever their problem may be. Tell them instead of complaining, they've got to get involved in the political process and transform our economy and our government. Now what the establishment tells you, sometimes in subtle ways and sometimes not so subtle ways, what they say to you is, don't be ridiculous, you can't do anything. You're basically powerless. We got all the money, we got the power, we own the economy, we own the media, we own the government. What can you do about it? You can't do nothing. We don't even want you to vote. It doesn't matter. That's what they want you to believe. They want you to believe that you are powerless. And if you believe you are powerless, you are pow powerless. If you believe that as human beings, you have the power to transform our government and our nation to a nation that cares for each other, a nation and a government in which a handful of billionaires do not control our government and our economy. If that is what you believe, and if you are prepared to get involved in the political struggle, then we can create that type of economy and that type of government. So let me end by just saying this. Do not allow anybody to tell you that you cannot bring about the kinds of changes that this country desperately needs. Do not believe them for a moment. That's what they want you to believe. Believe in your heart that when millions of people stand up and are prepared to take on the greed and corruption of corporate America and what goes on in Washington, D.C., when we are prepared to stand up against racism and sexism and homophobia and xenophobia and religious bigotry, when we are prepared to stand and go forward as one people and one nation, brothers and sisters, there is nothing that we cannot accomplish. Thank you all very much.